to you by Binani Cement. The Indian healthcare industry is growing at a rapid pace thanks to change agents who are transforming the face of healthcare in India and to the government, private players and PPP models who are making a difference. ICICI Lombard and CNBC TV18 present the Healthcare Summit as a prelude to the India Healthcare Awards 2013, an exclusive forum that will bring together key stakeholders who are championing the cause of healthcare in India and leading change this August in Mumbai. Presented by ICICI Lombard Health Insurance. What does it take to conquer the chaos and do business in India? But the idea is to, is to never say die, is to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. So what that eventually means is that we've been able to gain market share over decades. In this market, in this game, you're one innovation away or you're as good as your last innovation. When the initial infatuation with India is over and reality sets in, what do multinational companies need to do to succeed in India? They need to say, hey, we started at the top, but we need to quickly get to the middle, which is where the market is. It's imperative that if an MNC or an Indian company wants to work in this environment, it has to de facto develop the resilience to work within the chaos. You have a well-educated population, the cultural diversity, you have a sound judicial system, you have an innovation culture, you have the world's largest free market. How important is it to win in India in order to win in other emerging markets? Join me, Shireen Bhan, as I travel through the country with Ravi Venkatesan on our brand new series, Conquering the Chaos, only on CNBC TV 18. This is TV 18. And you're watching CNBC TV 18. Brought to you by HSBC Commercial Banking. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Some success stories read like a fairy tale. Perhaps that's the reason one does not get bored reading these stories again and again. This is largely because these success stories give you hope, inspiration, and above all, the conviction that one lifetime is indeed good enough to achieve a lot and make it big. Well, the fairy tale I'm referring to are those of Dhirubhai Ambani and M.S. Oberoi. In the case of Dhirubhai Ambani, he started his life as a petrol attendant in Aden and then went on to own India's largest petroleum refining company. As for M.S. Oberoi, he started his working life as a clerk at Cecil Hotel in Shimla and then went on to set up the country's largest hotel chain, the Oberoi Group. One commonality between Ambani and Oberoi is that they were both born into a middle-class family, started their life as an employee and became a legend in their own lifetime. The story of this week's hero is very similar. 60 years ago, Samprada Singh started his working life at a medical store in Patna. Today, he is the owner of 2,500 crore rupees Alcom Laboratories, which is among the top 10 pharma companies in India. Take a look at Alcom's story and you'll know how to make it big in your own lifetime. Age has not slowed him down. At 87, most people are well into the peak of their retirement spending time playing with their grandchildren or religiously attending spiritual discourses. But not Samprada Singh. He is busy in his lower parel office, tweaking business plans, rejigging product portfolios and giving thrust to international operations. Basically, Singh is pushing the envelope so as to make Alchem Laboratories a $1 billion company in the next three years. And going by his past track records, this homespun company, which is among the top 10 pharma players in India, will easily hit the billion dollar mark. Not without reason. This domestic focused company has an impressive product portfolio, largely catering to acute therapies. It has an array of 800 brands, out of which 14 brands feature among the top 300 brands in India. Alchem is perhaps the first pharma company in India to have a single brand, Taxim, an anti-infective drug contributing 150 crore rupees to its turnover. Its other money-spinning brands are Taxim O, Clavim, Pan, Ondem and A to ZNS to name a few. 
In fact, its top 10 brands contribute nearly 1,000 crore rupees to the company's turnover. All these are indication of deep understanding of the market, strong brands and its marketing prowess. And this shows in its financials. For the last six years, its top line has been growing at a CAGR of 18% with net profit clocking a CAGR of 28%. Thus, sales turnover grew from 1,024 crore rupees in 2008 to 2,335 crore rupees in 2013. While net profit jumped from 145 crore to 496 crore rupees during the same period. While revenue from pharma is its staple diet, the management has insulated itself rather well with its strong treasury operations that provide substantial other income to the PNL account. Alchem, which is giving deep pocket and R&D driven MNCs a run for their money, is a desi company in its truest sense. It is run like the Hindu undivided family with Sampradha Singh as the karta. Complementing him in all fronts is his 14 years younger brother Basudev Singh who is the managing director of Alkim. Basudev Singh plays the devil's advocate, cautioning big brother Samprada who has the habit of thinking big right from his childhood days. Samprada Singh was born on 26 August 1926 in Okri, a small village in Bihar to a middle class family which largely subsisted on agriculture. At age 11, he was part of the mob that set a police station on fire under British India. Young Singh's aim was to become a doctor, but poor marks did not permit him to pursue his dream. So he graduated in commerce from Gaya College in 1950. Samprada Singh, who was the first graduate in his village, has always been a man with a purpose. In pursuit of his dream, Samprada Singh first dabbled in farming, but successive droughts in Bihar took him to selling umbrellas. The seasonal nature of the umbrella business made him hard sell the concept of a medical store to his umbrella business partner. A business that in his own words made him a semi-doctor. That was 1953. Not getting his share of money saw Samprada along with his relatives start Lakshmi Pharma in 1960, a pharma distribution company. Here too he faced a similar problem. So, he finally set up his own pharma distribution agency, Magad Pharma, in Patna. Running the retail and distribution business for 16 years enabled Samprada Singh to learn the ropes of the trade. He developed product knowledge, understood distribution trade and the power of branding. Along with these qualities, he also developed a good rapport with industry bigwigs. All these would stand him good steed in times to come. In 1970, he finally decided to take the big plunge by moving into manufacturing of pharma products. He moved to Bombay to set up Aristo Lab with the Rajya Sabha MP. Here too, the partnership ran into problems. Finally, after too many setbacks and bad experiences, he decided to go solo. Thus was born Alchem Laboratories in 1973. Initially, it made two products, broad cylind capsule and Metron tablets on loan licensee basis. With good response, Singh set up his own plant in Taloja in 1978, making over 12 products. The real turning point for Alchem was in 1989 when it started manufacturing and marketing Taxim, an antibiotic which was directly competing with Hex product. This product was the game changer for Alchem. After that, there was no looking back. The seed sown 40 years ago has bloomed and blossomed into a fruit-bearing tree. But Samprada Singh realized that there are limitations to a family-run business. To give it a professional touch, he recalled Ravindra Shinoy by appointing him as President and COO in 2009. Shinoy has put in place an action plan that dovetails with the Chairman's vision. The organization is uh, uh, by design. We, are not, we don't talk too much about ourselves. And uh, to attract talent, I think we have to start interacting a little bit on industry fora and uh, have something said about us as well as uh, share details about how the, all the good things that we have done in the past. Like the, uh, I think uh, we must have shared with you in that the first 100 crore brand came from the house of Alchem. And that we have more than a dozen brands within the top 300 brands of the domestic industry. Plus we had to look at uh, building up the core of our, uh, the uh, organization in the form of R&D. Uh, so we strengthened an R&D, we strengthened the various teams within the marketing divisions, we strengthened the various support functions. So all this was carried out over the last four years.
and we still have some distance to go, I would say. It will mean expansion on, uh, and consolidation. Expansion into products, therapeutic segments and markets where we are currently not present or consolidation in markets and products and segments where we are present. And both has its set of challenges, but uh, I believe we are equipped to deal with those challenges. To ensure that the COO's game plan is accomplished, CFO Rajesh Dube is ensuring money is raised at fine rates and only minimum taxes are paid out. When a company is growing at the pace of 20% per annum, uh, then you have to fuel 20% every time more. You have to uh, monitor your financial activities also accordingly. Second, you are expanding not only domestically but uh, in interna international market also. So you have to take care of a lot of compliances, a lot of uh, uh, financing requirements abroad. You start uh, acquiring products, you start acquiring acquisitions, uh, uh, and you see different, different market, different, different challenges. So all put together uh, is quite challenging um, if you take overall as far as alchemy is concerned. If you look at pharma sector, you find two, three kinds of companies. You find the MNCs, then you find Indian companies that have made research, for example, a Lupin or a Sun, uh, to some extent now Cadilla, Dr. Reddy's. They adopted research in a very aggressive manner. And then there is a third category of companies which adopted marketing as a key success factor. I think Alchem is one of those companies uh, which have adopted marketing as, uh, as that makes a big difference. On the international front, the company, though a late entrant, is beginning to make its presence felt. It entered the global arena in 2000, but in 13 years has made inroads in 48 countries with exports netting 500 crore rupees. Now plans are afoot to scale even bigger. See, in international business, we started a bit late, to be honest, compared to our peers. So to differentiate, uh, we need to kind of do things much faster and more aggressive uh, than our competition has done. So in the last uh, four or five years, we have acquired three companies, all uh, internationally, one in Australia and one in, uh, two in uh, USA. One of them is also a manufacturing company in US. So we are also trying to do a lot of uh, first to files and patent challenges in USA. So our focus would be international uh, US, where the revenues would go up significantly. That's the way we would reach around, say, 50 percent of the uh, total revenue will, would come from international business in the next uh, four to five years. Today, Alchem is firing on all cylinders. With over 4,500 employees working across 17 manufacturing plants, four R&D units, 37 depots, 61 CNF units and six warehouses across the country, Alchem is on a roll. So what's driving the Singh brothers whose only hobby seems to be business? Time for a short break, but when we come back, we get up close and personal with Chairman Samprada Singh and Managing Director Basudev Singh. Also joining us on the show is Sandeep Uppal, MD and Head Commercial Banking of HSBC, giving us a banker's take on Alchem. Stay tuned. On Overdrive this week, the brand that was shelved to solve Nissan's financial crisis 27 years ago is back. And this time, Nissan is counting on it to strengthen its presence. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasure to introduce the first model in the new Datsun lineup, the Datsun Go. Also on the show, Volvo's latest offering in the Indian market, the V40 Cross Country. Catch Overdrive at these times only on CNBC TV 18. Servo Overdrive presented by Servo, world class lubricants from Indian Oil. Add Servo, add life in association with Apollo Tires and new Toyota Etios. Presenting the new Sangyong Rexton by Mahindra. Indulge yourself. Has the RBI rocked the boat too hard to save the rupee? Are there other lifelines to save the sinking currency? Find out on Indianomics this weekend 
एट दिस टाइम्स सवाल दिल्ली की सत्ता के गलियारों का है मुंबई के कारोबारियों का यूपी की गलियों का है राजस्थान के रजवाड़ों का ये सवाल है कश्मीर की वादियों का छत्तीसगढ़ के आदिवासियों का पंजाब की फसलों का आंध्र के जंगलों का जब हो देश का सवाल जवाब बताएंगे आप जिसे आम चुनाव तक हम लाएंगे सामने देखिए अगर अभी चुनाव हो तो सिर्फ आरियन सेवन पर एज इंडियन कंपनीज गो ग्लोबल ग्लोबल कंपनीज कम टू इंडिया सी एन बी सी टी डी ए टीम एंड हिंदुस्तान यूनिलीवर प्रेजेंट लेसन इन मार्केटिंग एक्सलेंस सीजन फाइव अ के स्टडी चैलेंज फॉर बी स्कूल कमिंग सून ओनली ऑन सी एन बी सी टी डी ए टीम प्रेजेंट बाय हिंदुस्तान यूनिलीवर लिमिटेड पीपल नीड पीपल दे नीड टू टॉक टू इच अदर एक्सप्रेस दम सेल्स लाइक इन ट्रू डेमोक्रेसी लाइक इन इंडिया But is it a true democracy where most people live in poverty without clean drinking water and electricity? There hasn't been a scam on electricity yet. Come on, sir. Let me see. There is a fully spectral scam, Bofors border, Havana, IPL, and now the defense helicopter scam. I'm waiting for a scam on medicine. Welcome back. The only passion for Sampradha Singh and BN Singh is business. This single-minded focus has helped them build Alcom into a formidable organization over the last 40 years. I caught up with Singh Brothers at Alcom House, located at Lower Parel in Mumbai, to find out what drives the promoters at this age and stage of their life to attend office six days in a week. And this is what they have to say. Okay, Sandeep Upal, Mr. Sampradha Singh, and Mr. BN Singh, welcome to the show. Okay, Mr. Singh, if I may start with you, all your life you wanted to be a doctor, yeah. but you could never become a doctor. So, you, did you? That is the reason you started a pharmaceutical company. Uh, no, because if I uh, could not become a doctor, then uh, life took uh, uh, for uh, for doctor it is for pharmaceuticals, and uh, the advice were given by my friends also. Okay. That you could not become a doctor. Now, uh, start a business of related to doctors. Yeah, let me get uh, Mr. B N Singh. What is unique about Alchem? When we started Alchem, the one thing which was always in my mind and in the mind of uh, my brother also, that which is the most important factor which will help in bringing up the organization. Okay. When I was studying in Patna University, I used to get good lectures from the in different departments from our professors, and I could know that for the or for any organization or for the country. the most important resource is the people okay so in a small way we thought how can we have a team of good people in alchem right from the level of worker to the level of manager we have to be careful about a recruitment we have to careful about their training improvement in mindset so that we can work together and take alchem to a great height So you invested a lot in the people. Yes. You empowered them, and you saw that they grew in your organization. I strongly believe that all over the world, organizations are made by the people, and this I have seen in Alchem also. What we are today, there are other factors which have contributed to success of Alchem, but the first most important contribution is from our people. They have made this company. An organization of 2,500 crores. Okay, between 1973 and 1989, what was the biggest turning point of your organization? Was making Taxim a biggest turning point of your organization because you took on a multinational like Hex at that point in time? What gave you the confidence, you and your brother, that confidence to take on a multinational and launch Taxim? Right from the beginning, we wanted to work in a systematic way, and we were seeing since we were in distribution business, we could know how other pharma companies are growing how they are making the brand so it was very much in our mind to focus on brand building and as you are asking the second factor which has contributed to the growth of alchem 
is our focus on brand building. So right from day one, we have gone to the doctors in a very professional way. We were very careful about selection of the brands. And we were knowing that it is the brands which will ultimately help in the growth of the organization. And brands are there used for, to the, given to the consumers. What is, when we are in pharma industry, it is the medicine which are made of brands. Okay. So from day one, we were very careful about our brands building. And that is why today, more than a dozen brands are featuring in ORG. Was it your idea to price the tax in lower than hex so that you could get a better market share? What was your idea? No, first uh, uh, tax in and then Trevum. Uh. Then uh, we had Pan, Pan D. And uh, they we had that uh, uh, Jim Kell. I would like to add here, yeah. out at least our 10 brands are among the top 100 brands of the industry, pharma industry as per ORG. Taxim is a brand of 150 crores, but what is important is that this is the first brand which could come to the level of 100 crores for the first time in pharma industry. This is totally domestic. There was no brand which was of 100 crores in pharma industry earlier. No brand, actually. No brand, including the multi brands of the multinational companies in India. So this gave us a lot of confidence and encouragement. Second, we were very careful about the quality of the product. Doctors are supporting us because of the, they have full confidence in the quality of Halkim's brand. Is the environment good enough today to keep your margins going compared to what it was once upon? When you look at patent, when you look at pricing, the government is controlling at least 348 drugs. Today, we are doing in a better work the industry is growing well. It is true that we, the pharma industry, like any other industry, is facing competition, and competition is severe everywhere. It is also a fact. But if you see the growth of pharma industry, I would say that uh, this is the, at the world global level, the growth of pharma industry is one of the highest in India. But is it uh, true that multinational is growing faster than domestic pharma companies? No. It's not so? If you see the ORG IMS of uh, previous months like uh, June, May, okay. industry has grown at the rate of 15%, 14%. But our multinational going double the rate? companies have grown at higher rate. Okay. Even our growth was 20% yes. uh, and 14% in last two months. And out of 25 top companies in ORG, hardly six, seven companies of multi multinational companies are featuring. And that too, their growth is below the industry growth. So what is your goal now? You want to be number one, number two, what is your goal? Definitely our goal is to be, become number one. And we are working hard sincerely and we have got a lot of confidence and willpower. Okay, let me get Sandeep in. Sandeep, you have heard these stories. It's a first person account from the promoters. As a banker, what is the sense you are getting of this company? If you see this company, Ravi, it's a classic case study of how to build a successful company. Because two themes are picked up. One is uh, apply what you learn. And the second part is that if an opportunity comes by, don't let it go. So if we see Alchem, the DNA of the company really goes back to the fact that Mr. Singh spent quite a bit of his time on the retail side of pharmacy. So I think that deep understanding of how the retail aspect of pharmacy works has really stood it in good stead because they do realize what's the power of a brand and why is it important to develop a brand. And that's quite an important aspect. I mean, I don't know pharma so well and I could never figure out why would you develop a brand which no one can pronounce, for example. True. <laughs> Actually, you're right. Bang on. So it's a, it's a very specialized branding space. So I think being in retail, given his experience, branding comes out very strong. The second aspect is distribution. The power of distribution and the strength of distribution, I think Mr. Singh realized it early and that's one of the strengths of the company. If you see the size of the India population and the geography, the ability, and it's a bit like FMCG, how do you ensure that you can deliver medicine to the doorstep of a consumer yeah. at a reasonable price? And if you can get that, volumes will come your way. The third aspect, which I think comes from more the business acumen is, how do you organize your production that is efficient? So they've done all these three to develop this company over the last 30, 40 years. In addition to that, one part which they didn't speak about, but that's what we see from a banker's perspective is the sheer focus. They were very clear in their mind yeah. that it has to be Indian formulation business. They didn't yeah. get 
too involved uh, at early stage with API, bulk, exports, etc. They really built this business before they said, let's mature this business before we step out. So those are some of the real pluses we see in this company. A very cash rich company, zero debt company. Every promoter would like to unlock values and list it in the market. What are your rationale for not listing? Right now we are managing with our own resources, with our own accruals, whatever requirement, whenever there is a requirement of funds, we have been managing ourselves. But in future, if there is such a need, we need a big fund, we are open about it. Mr. Singh, I want to ask you, what is the mantra for success? Is it technology? Is it people? Is it product? Or is it luck? The people are very, more important, most important. More right to that, you said. Luck will always help us if we will take care of our people, our products, technology, and other aspects. Okay, that's very well put. The other thing I want to ask you is, you also been a little international focus now. You have acquired two companies that brought. Yeah. Going forward, what is your strategy in the international space? See, uh, now we are focusing more on our international business. And as you know well, that every major company in India is getting more sale from the internet, out of the total sale, the 60% contribution, 70% contribution of the total sale, total revenue comes from international business. So that strategy has to be for Alchem. We have started late, but we are moving in that direction, and we are giving a lot of uh, stress, a lot of focus on international business. Sandeep, uh, as a banker, what kind of help can you give or advice you can give to this company? So clearly, as uh, has been articulated, Alchem to date has been a largely a domestic company yeah. with strength in marketing, distribution, and production. Yeah. But what it's enabled to uh, Alchem to do is that it's got the financial strength to now step out into the world arena with confidence, having both the technical capability of marketing, distribution, production, as well as the financial strength to step out. Now, from our perspective, companies such as Alchem uh, pretty much marry the footstep a bank like HSBC would have. So, you know, we spoke about uh, US, we talk about Australia, but we see a number of pharmaceutical companies going to Europe and Latin America, especially Brazil and Mexico. So from our perspective, we would be looking to handhold and open doors for Alchem as it goes into such countries and allow them to access product and services in these countries at the same time, like a multinational, being able to manage their operation as much as they like sitting here in Mumbai itself. Okay, Mr. Singh, if I may come to you, what is the advice you're giving your sons and grandsons about the do's and don'ts of the business? No, we will ask them to be very sincere, hardworking like us, what we have done. So they will ask them to follow whatever we have done. Uh, they have to become very sincere, hard work, and be ambitious. Be ambitious? Yeah, yeah. So oh, that's well put. Thanks a lot, Mr. B.N. Singh, for being on the show, Mr. Singh, for being on the show, and Sandeep Paul for being on the show. Thanks, Tari. Well, that was Sampradha Singh and B.N. Singh explaining that the key to success is investment in brand and people. These are the mantras Singh Brothers implemented at Alcom. Be ambitious and think big. It may seem simple, but hard to practice. Be extremely focused. Do one business, but do it very well. Know your trade in and out. Sampradha Singh understood the ABC of pharma trade from retail level to distribution, product mix to power of branding. Keep a low profile. Shun page three temptations. Be financially conservative. Resist temptation to over leverage your balance sheet. And finally, invest in people big time. Well, Sampradha Singh who's fighting fit is clearly telling the budding entrepreneurs that nothing is impossible, and that one lifetime is indeed good enough to achieve a lot. Singh is indeed a rare breed of inspirational entrepreneur. I doff my hat for his childlike enthusiasm at 87. On that note, it is time to say goodbye. See you next week with another such interesting story. Till then, keep watching CNBC TV 18. HSBC Commercial Banking.
Channel Japan. Get the latest stories from Japan as they happen on the ground. In this episode, an investment fund to launch.